Today is Friday, August 12th, 2022, and you're listening to the Ask a Christian podcast. I'm your host, Nate. You can find more of our episodes to download for free at askachristian.podbean.com, as well as check us out on rumble.com slash askachristian, or visit our website, askachristian.org, with dashes between the words. So today, uh, prepare. Grab your uh, space glasses and uh, space suits, and I don't know, spaceship if you have one, or if you imagine one, you'll be transported. I don't know. Journey with us throughout the galaxies of space and time and into the fifth dimension. Um, what am I talking about? I'm still wondering that, and I just got out of this conversation. So uh, we have a narrow scope today, and by narrow scope, I mean uh, not a whole lot of different topics, but really one topic that just goes a thousand different ways from Sunday. So um, let's take a walk throughout galaxies. Well, where are you, um, I guess, where are you coming from? Like, what's your background? Are you a believer in anything? Not a spiritual person? Um, I'm spiritual, raised as uh, evangelical Christian, uh, four generations of missionaries. Um, and now I, I've really left Christianity behind. So I guess the topic would be, what brought that about? Um, I look at the church and I look at how people conduct themselves. Um, and I find that it's more ritual and uh, legal language within the biblical texts and so forth. And I don't see it deep and meaningful. Um, I'm a follower of Jim Rigby, and I love him. And I love his approach to Christianity. But I I find the Christian church to be pretty empty now these days. And by that, um, I don't believe that politics belongs in the church. The reason that uh, we put in separation of church and state is that we came from England and we would have to be of uh, the English religion. So we went ahead and put in separation of church and state. And I think that all religions should be embracing each other. I think they all have something very significant to say. And I'm just not seeing that with the with Christianity anymore. You know, we're supposed to love one another, and I, I don't see the love. Uh, you look at the South, and you look at how they're conducting themselves, and and the language, and the name calling, and the venom, and uh, I'm just not seeing the love. Interesting. So if I could maybe channel your evangelical ancestors for a minute. Um, Out of everything you you said about why you're not a Christian or don't follow Christianity anymore, I didn't hear Jesus mentioned once. So I agree with you about a lot of, you know, his supposed followers. And, you know, the Bible talks a lot about that and says, hey, this should not be. You should be known to be Christians by the love you have for each other. So to me, if I see a bunch of, you know, crappy churches or crappy Christians, I would think that's evidence that, you know, we are fallen and we are imperfect and we totally need Jesus because look what a mess we are. Um, So about what I would say is actual Christianity, like, you know, Jesus, the stuff he says um, among them, you know, it isn't a lot of what you touched on, but it's like, hey, believe in me as a son of God that, you know, died for your sins. And if you believe you're not perfect, and you have sin that needs forgiven and you can't do it yourself, trust me, follow me, ask me to make you born again and give you eternal life. And that is Christianity. So if you never see another church person, if you never pass another church with a steeple, um, I, I would pose to you, that's Christianity. So I guess what's your thought on that? Like Jesus, uh, just a guy, didn't probably exist, did exist, but not God. 
No clue. I wouldn't pretend to have a clue. Uh, the Bible has been written over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Uh, you leave certain books out. Uh, historical texts are missing and so forth. Um, have no clue. Um, you know, at this point, uh, Jesus is a spiritual uh, concept. So uh, it could be, it, it could not be, I don't know anymore. Um, but I do see that, uh, Christianity seems to have less and less to offer because if these people who believe in Christ behave this way, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to behave that way. I don't want to be a part of that movement. And these are the people that say they believe in Christ. So, well, so I, I uh, you know, I don't want to sound too attacky, but I, I would also push back on a lot of stuff. So, you know, when you when you say these are the people that believe in Christ that act this way, um, well, you know, I'm I'm one of those people. So, you know, I, I I think we just met for the first time. So, I would hope that I'm not one of these people that say I believe in Christ and you know by faith alone, um, you know, regardless, which, you know, I'd also talk about the Bible and, you know, the accuracy of it, but leaving that alone for a minute, I would say, you know, someone just told me before I even read about the Bible, uh, you know, someone told me, hey, there's a Jesus and, you know, he wants you to pray to him and, you know, have this conversation with him one-on-one. -on -one, and I did that, right? So if I never had a Bible, um, you know, I would say something like, since you were raised in church, my spirit bears witness. Like there's just this like thing inside of me that that just like jumps out like yes this Jesus is real even if I never had a Bible and you know argued about how how many times it was written or rewritten so I, I would make that point but then yeah as far as you know the crappy Christians uh, I don't think you can say that about all Christians because you know I am one and right. I don't want to sound biased that about but all I... <laughs> Christians I'm not saying that about all Christians I happen like I said Jim Jim Rigby I adore I don't know who that is who is that. He's a, a Christian. He's a, a minister in Austin, Texas. I absolutely adore him. I think he's right on the money. Uh, it's whatever he, he uh, his spirit feels good. Uh, he's got uh, good uh, critical thinking. Uh, he's willing to break away from traditional thinking and really contemplate on things. Um, he can speak in layman's terms and not quote scripture over and over as uh, his uh -oh. argument. And then he can refer to it and say, you know, here's the scripture that I've studied. This is the scripture that uh, I'm talking about, but he's not, throwing out scripture, 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 scripture. And then I'm supposed to interpret the scripture as he's talking. Uh, he talks to people in layman's terms and then he'll refer to scripture. Um, and then you get to see what scripture is, but I don't know that you need scripture. I think that if, if Christ is Christ, uh, and he's in your heart, uh, I don't think you need language. I think the heart speaks the language. Well, I would, I would say something, but Felix keeps on muting. Do you want to say something, Felix? Or was that an accident? Maybe it was an accident. But, you know, so I guess, you know, without answering, I guess, you know, you kind of, you kind of answered my unspoken questions. So as far as Jesus, your primary issue with Christianity is Christians, which isn't surprising. I, I think it would just be, you know, a perspective shift. Like, you know, it's just a surprise that followers of Christ aren't perfect. If you read the Bible, even if you question whatever you question, you know, the stories in it show that even the disciples of Christ were not perfect. They were constantly quarreling and fighting, you know, just like imperfect people in need of a savior. And, you know, Jesus addresses that, you know, Paul and Peter have a spat and, and that gets addressed. So, you know, the point of that is no one, no one is different. No one has a higher, a, a higher moral authority. You know, there are, are avowed atheists who can do good moral stuff better than professing Christians. And, uh, you know, who knows what's ultimately in their heart. That's between them and, you know, this God I believe in. But, uh, you know, the Bible does make a couple claims, just two more things you said. The Bible does make some claims like, you know, about scriptures and, you know, 
if this is the word of God, then this, this is useful. It's useful for education, for reproof, you know, to learn about the stories about Jesus and the life of these Christians um, who you can see some were good, some were bad, but they all needed a savior. And as far as, you know, if you didn't need a Bible, I, I mean, that's what I said. Like if I never knew what the Bible was and someone just told me about Jesus and I prayed and I'm like, oh, wow, this person told me to pray to God and I did and I found God and, you know, Jesus lives with me now. Um, if that's true, then, then yes, that's all you need. Um, but since, you know, we have a Bible and we have scriptures available and we have, you know, just like anything else, we have historical evidence, we have natural secular writings, we have all these other things. So we have information. Why not use it? Um, and, you know, if tr uh, true, you mentioned something earlier about you think there's value in all religions. And I could go a little ways down that road. Like, you know, there would be different value. Like, I don't know, in like Hinduism, you could get like to a branch of yoga or something um, and, you know, find some benefit to like body stretching. Um, so, I mean, there would be some benefits in different religions. Um, but ultimately for Christianity, the claim is as far as spirituality and this eternal life go, uh, you know, Jesus is the only way and, and it's exclusive, right? Because there are certain religions that say, only their way is the right way. And if you're not in their religion, then you're wrong. Well, Christianity would be one of those. So ultimately, no, it can't play nice with others about gods and deities and stuff like that. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, doing some stretching or a certain diet um, wouldn't be beneficial. I hope that makes sense. Well, so I, Jesus I think, your, well, well, I think sorry, meditation yeah, yeah, I, is incredibly powerful. Uh, meditation is a deep form of prayer. I mean, Christianity does not have the monopoly on prayer. Uh, you may refer to Christianity or you may refer to prayer as something that, you know, uh, belongs to, to Christ, but uh, that's not true. Uh, prayer is prayer. It is a technique. It is uh, 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 a practice that is available to every human being. So uh, I think that uh, meditation is a very powerful tool. I mean, I've had a, a lot of epiphanies in meditation. Was Christianity as false one of them? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't discount that. Like, you know, I'm not no, saying anyone has a not, monopoly. That's not fair. That's not fair. You know, I, I was being a little flippant, in the it... beginning what I thought. And if you look at the Christian leaders, the people that are running the pulpit uh, and what they're doing, and I'm talking about the mega churches, uh, the people that are getting political, uh, the people that are calling names, the people that are wanting to tear people apart. Uh, and separate people, take a monopoly on their point of view, and so forth. Uh, and these are people who follow Christ, and they're still capable of doing such carnage. Okay. Well, well, I, how could well, they yeah, be I, followers? Yeah, so I, I got to stop you real quick because, well, for one, it sounds like you're getting a little more heated. Where I don't know. Maybe it was my uh, flippant joke about prayer. But, but just to back up a step. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying Christians have a monopoly on prayer. Like we have examples of, you know, other religions praying to demons and praying to idols and, you know, doing human sacrifice and prayer to their demon gods. So, you know, prayer is not a monopoly held by Christians. And then, you know, also, like you say, Christians don't have a monopoly on prayer, which I agree with. Um, Mega church pastors don't have a monopoly on Christianity. So, you know, if if you say you have a problem with these mega pastors, which, by the way, lots of Christians I know also have a problem with them. So, one, all we have is people's word. So if someone says they're a Christian, a Christian pastor or whatever, and all they talk about is this mega church stuff and like money and I don't know, prosperity stuff, um, you know, line that up with the scripture because not everyone that says they're a Christian is just like, you know, anything. Not everyone that says they're an atheist probably is. Maybe they do it for peer pressure and they really believe in something. So, you know, just because I, I, I mean, we have to kind of take people at their word, but I wouldn't do that at the expense of writing off an entire religion because sometimes, you know, people are deceitful. Um, you know, spoiler alert. So just because some mega church pastors you don't like, which by the way, I don't like either. Probably we could name drop. Um, and, and I would think there's a lot of problems with their Christianity and it gives Christ a bad name. So I would just say that. And, um, you know, for every mega church pastor that you can't get away from because they're everywhere. Think of all the people. I don't know, maybe like your generations of ancestors who are like just normal evangelical people. Just again, if your ancestors are totally terrible, then I get it. But I'm, I'm thinking about you, all the evangelical people who are missionaries and just sharing the love of Christ, not expecting anything in return, just having humble little church some, uh, services on Sundays, like out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so I would say I would say that. 
So, you know, there would definitely be counter examples to what you're saying, but um, yeah, go ahead and respond real quick and then we'll talk to Russ and Chris and see what they have to say. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, you talk fast, so that's when I get hyper because uh, my brain has to keep up with yours. And then uh, it causes me to get louder because my brain is working faster. So it has a brain speed thing, but um, no, my, my relatives were very kind and sweet. Uh, and, uh, I have no issue with, uh, how they practice and what they believe in. Um, so that's not what has turned me off to, uh, Christianity. I mean, if, if you're forming a church now these days, I would say that the churches have become so political, not only political as in government politics, but these also have become political inside. When 9-11 happened, I went out to uh, the Crystal Cathedral uh, because I was in California and my boyfriend was in the World Trade Center. And um, I couldn't believe how cold they treated me when I needed support. And this is a church. This is a church of many people. This is a church where it's not just a minister. It's a church of individuals. It's a church of individuals that say that they they run their life through the teachings of Christ and that every decision that they make, uh, they question and they say, what would Jesus do? And um, I was really surprised at uh, the way it was treated. So those weren't Christians. The Crystal Cathedral is not a Christian church. How do you know? Because I can read their doctrine. I'm well familiar with Robert, with uh, uh, Vincent Peale, who was their pastor. Like he was not Robert a Christian Schuller. pastor. Robert Schuller. Or Robert Schuller, was, rather. Uh, yeah. 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 Robert but he, does yeah, he was not a Christian Christ. pastor. No, he no, does no. He believe believes, in Christ. Hold on. He believes in a. Christ that is not the Christ of the Bible that we believe in as Christians. You can say you believe in Christ all you want. It, the Mormons believe in Christ. The Jehovah's Witnesses believe in Christ. They, they don't believe in the in the Christian idea of Christ. The same thing with Schuller and the same thing with the Crystal what Cathedral. What do you mean by that? No, no. I, I, what do you mean by that? Because uh, my friends that are Mormon n read the same Bible you do, and they have some wonderful perspectives on things. Nate, you want you to take this, or do you want to? Um, well, I do. Before you do, um, Russ was technically first to speak. I just want to give them a chance to speak, and then you can go crazy, Chris. Um, you know, with whatever you want to say. But um, uh, Russ, I'd like to join in. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. No, no, uh, Russ first, and then Philip quick, because I know Chris is probably going to take a little bit of time. No, so Russ, just, go ahead. I was just going to point out that what uh, you know. Uh, prayer is, is not, you know, exclusive to Christianity, but what makes us different is the object of our prayer. You know, we pray to the creator um, who revealed himself through the scriptures and lastly and finally through his son, Jesus Christ. And so that that's what makes it different. Like you can pray to other deities and they may... Uh, do some things for a person here or there because there are, you know, lowercase g gods. But the object of our prayer is what makes us different. I just wanted to point that out. Um, you know, I agree with her to the extent that, yeah, prayer isn't exclusive to Christianity, but the object of our prayer is, you know. Uh, Philip. Well, I'd like to address that Mormon comment with a couple questions. Um, okay, well, I thought it was going to be quick because I know Chris is going to take some time. Um, no, I would, yeah. So, I mean, is she still here? Oh, it's Kat. Yeah, she's... So, so I guess, and I'll, and I'll be quick about this, but like, this is actually a question towards you. Because you read the same Bible, which, and if you ever talk to a Mormon, they really don't read the Bible. They claim to read the Bible, but then you ask them about very, like, very very clear things like did jesus come to die in the sin for your cross for now and forever they don't know how to answer that according to the bible um and if you 
and if you listen to Joseph Smith, he says you can't trust the Bible. Um, so you can say stuff like this, um, but I'm not trying to be rude, but like for people like me and Chris that have actually looked into these things to have conversations with Mormons, um, you can claim to be whatever you want, but it doesn't make you something. And it's not something I mean to be rude, but it's not, you know, there, there's a fundamental difference. And like, if you really want to get into, before you even get into Mormonism, just get into the history of Mormonism. The history of Mormonism will make you suspect with it itself as well. So I would say at best, Mormonism is a friendly cult. Yeah, and I don't. Yeah, Cass, I, I want Chris to. I want Chris to talk, but I. I, I think we're just going to have to agree to disagree because, um, you know, I don't want to say who who's. I don't know who has better views or you know which Christians right and stuff like that, but you know it. It sounds like everything you've said is is definitely your views, um, but I would challenge a lot of them not on the level of you know. Uh, my my religion and my way is right because I really believe it is um, because we're we're so far from from getting to that point. It's more like well, look if if we all just if we all just took like a small amount of time and studied the the points you made that we've been talking about for for the last little bit, then we could just see on paper right like um, we could go through the Mormon doctrine, we could go through the Crystal Cathedral like the points of doctrine what they actually believe. Um, we could go through the stuff that we talked about in the Bible and Jesus and all this other stuff. And we could just say, well, look, before we get to why I think my specific views are right, a lot of these claims are just factually wrong, not because we just say it and we like believe it, but because like across the board, anyone that would just take a small amount of time to look into this would be on the same page about a lot of these issues. Like, OK, this is objectively right. This is objectively wrong. And once we're on that playing field, then we could talk about specifics like I mean, we will anyways. But that would be the time to talk about, like, you know, why we think specifically uh this view of mormonism is wrong like you know they have their own bible they have their own extra book and the bible specifically warns about having extra writings um which they they do right so like this would be like an objective thing that we would say well it's not just a difference between you and mormons you know you guys are all right you all have merit it would be like well you know one group is is trying to follow what the bible says the other is objectively doing something against it um so i hope that uh massages the conversation but i would like chris to um because he was going to well, talk wait about a but before, oh, oh, yeah, before Chris yeah. takes over, um, uh, and I have to leave anyway. Um, I, 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 I have been through a lot of, looked at a lot of different religions. I've looked objectively. I've looked deep. I think I've looked as deep as uh, a lot of people, and you have no idea how deep I've looked. Sure. Uh, Can you tell walking me? Can away you just... from something or saying, I'm not sure I believe that anymore, wasn't just a flippant decision. Uh, it was a deep internal experience. So if life seems to give me love and beauty and reward, uh, lack of judgment, lack of hierarchy, lack of, uh, uh, I could go on. Uh, and if I'm able to live a happier life um, based on some of the, the, the decisions I've made about uh, religion, then I have to go with that because the whole point about Christianity, one of the premises is that you live a loving, fulfilling life. And if life is getting better by not following the doctrine of it, then, um, I, I can't, I can't reject it. Uh, Chris. He's on the phone. So, oh, she's on the phone. I, I don't really want to get into a debate of what you've looked at or you haven't looked at. But to, to, if I said the same thing to you that I'm living a happy and healthy life, but I'm actually hurting others with the way that I live my life, would you say that I would you say that it's still happy? I'm still being fulfilled and happy. I don't know. I wouldn't make that judgment. That's your judgment. Not okay. mine. I can't make that judgment on you. Why, why can't you? Why can't I? Because mm -hmm. I, I can't experience your inner world. You're an so individual. You own your inner world. I, I can't experience uh -huh. 
your inner world. I, I, I can't so, judge what conflicts you have. Sure. So if I'm, if you objectively see me hurting other people doing, you can put a litmusy of test on those things. You're saying you can't judge that. If I see you hurting somebody and I'm a witness to it, uh, I can judge the hurt that you've inflicted, but I can't judge what your internal process was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore we just don't have a critique at all of really looking at somebody's life and actually saying whether or not it's worth living. No, I, I, I can look at people that have a wonderful life, uh, have a lot of money, uh, go through life really easy, uh, and don't hurt people. But that doesn't mean I can understand their life, that I can understand their internal process. I mean, you know, maybe they have uh, a loving life because uh, they had loving parents and they had a big family and the family was uh, understanding and um, mm -hmm. cohesive and they like that and they stay in that type of world and they don't step out of their comfort zone. I don't know. Sure. Well, so I, evil's I mean, okay well, then. I mean, evil's well, okay then. Well, hang on. Before we start talking about philosophical stuff, I can't handle it today, but I don't think it's relevant. Like, more than just, like, a loving life, there's all kinds of, like, you know, non-godly stuff that will that will have someone, you know, uh, have a peaceful existence. Meditation, um, you know, different religions, no religions, um, medication. So there's all kinds of stuff to, I, I would say, mask. Other people would say, you know, fulfill. But there's all types of stuff <laughs> out there point. that can... That's philosophical there's all types too. Of, there's all types of stuff that can mask uh you know whatever you need to give you what you would say is a fulfilling loving existence but you know that that's like so far below the ultimate claims of christianity and most religions by the way that there is something more than this life that there is some sort of afterlife so you know when jesus says repent believe the gospel and be saved this is like an all-encompassing like universal forever type thing and after you get that it's like, yes, you should certainly be good, moral, loving people, but no matter how good and no matter how loving you are, in your in a hundred years, you and everyone you know is gonna be dead. So it's like, you know, you should do good for them while you can, but it's fleeting. So if you do the ultimate good in this world, you're all still going to die. So what then? And for people that truly espouse that they believe nothing, well, then this world is all you have. You better make the best of it. But for people like most people on earth who believe there is some sort of afterlife, then, you know, you should, and by you, I mean, you know, whoever is interested, you should spend a little bit of time exploring that. And I would, again, ask you to prayerfully consider and call out to the name of Jesus, um, because that's, that's the ultimate point about Christianity. It's not just making good people bad. It's making spiritually dead people alive. So, you know, they can have this pleasant afterlife. And I know you said you were raised evangelical. I know you've heard this your whole life. Yeah, I, I have. I and, and that's yeah, so not even that's that's not even where I go. I don't know what afterlife is. Well, I you don't heard what know. I said, right? I, I don't know that. I think that. Well, well, hang, hang on, Cass. I, Cass oh, wait, sorry. I, 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 this not, is very important. Hold on, Cass. I, I hate to do this, but you interrupted me, which is fine. But I just want to make sure you heard what I said because you came in so quick to like go with your direction. I just want you to acknowledge you you heard what I said. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just kind of talking to someone that doesn't care. So could could you come off mute and just acknowledge you heard what I said? Just come off mute. That's all I'm looking for. You can say whatever you want. I just want to see if you heard what I said. And you're on mute. So just click unmute and let me know. There is a little microphone button there. I heard what you said, but what I was trying to say is that's, that's this perspective that I disagree with. I think that this time on earth is a very, very, very small, small, portion of who we are and that eternal life is our natural state 
and that that is where we are. But there's levels in eternal life. There could be other Earths. There could be other places, other planets and stuff that we jump from place to place for this experience as a soul. And so I'm not concerned about, like, life and death. I'm more concerned about the soulful spiritual experience of who I am, the, the individual that God made me, the, the purpose that God how, how made you, me. How do you know well, that well, God hang on, made Hang on, Philip. Hang on, Philip. I'm, I'm adamant that when she's done, if Chris is available, because we keep cutting him off. So I, I'm oh, adamant yeah, that fine. Chris is the next one to speak. Go ahead, Kess. Well, that, that's all I, I wanted to say on that, because um, you okay. said... You said uh, the point of being a Christian is eternal life, and that's great. We're here on earth, and we love each other, and we take care of each other, but the point of Christianity is eternal life, and uh, I disagree with the point of Christianity is eternal life. Um, You know, on another planet, uh, they may not call it Christianity. They may call it something else. Uh, It could be the same Christ. It could be the same uh, uh, fundamental concepts that have to be practiced universally amongst the the cosmos. Um, But it could be called something else. So I don't get into the language um, I get into the principles, the aspects, the 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 things that I think are eternal aspects that affect the cosmos and everything in it, the leaves on the okay. trees. Yeah, and just to clarify, you know, I didn't say, I mean, maybe you could read that, but I, I didn't mean that, you know, Christianity is eternal life. Um, that would be like Jesus is eternal life. So whatever you're saying about, you know, planets and other stuff. I, I would say the, the single source creator of everything that I believe, that is eternal life, and, and that is Jesus. Uh, that's the claim I'm making. Uh, but Chris, are you there, Chris? Yeah, sure. Take it away. So, Whatever you want to say. So, Cass, good morning. My name is Chris. Nice to meet you. Hey, Chris. Hey, so uh, I guess what I would say is Christianity is a a proposition of a truth claim. Okay. And the, do you know what the main truth claim of Christianity is? I don't know. We may have different opinions about what that is. I mean, what do you think it is? I mean, I, I mean, we, we can, we can differ. That's fine. I just, you know, what, what do you think that the main there's, if you had to pick one truth claim of Christianity, what would that be? Original sin. Well, that's a pretty good answer. Okay. Um, and so I, I would I would answer slightly differently, but kind of on the same vein, that the main truth claim, according to Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, is that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, right? And that if Jesus Christ raised from the dead, then he had to have been God, and therefore everything that he said had to be true. And so when we talk about who Jesus Christ is, the nature of what God is and how Jesus Christ presented an image of God to us, if he did indeed raise from the dead, then we have to believe him, right? Would that follow? You mean the the raised from the dead as in uh, the physical body, the death of body, or yeah, so, raised from the dead of something else. You, you're talking about, but but see, go back to original sin. Christ wouldn't have to exist if original sin didn't happen. Well, well sure. So, but, but yeah, but I mean, the, but what, what Paul talks about in turn, and you're right. I mean, there's something called federal headship in Romans five seventeen through through twenty, et cetera, et cetera. So you're not wrong about original sin at all. I, what I but what I would say is I know, what, but, but it's yeah, not yeah. about right and wrong, right? It's not about yeah, yeah, right yeah. and wrong. It's about well, what but, you believe. No, 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 no. But there are truth claims. So those are about right and wrong. But right? it's a claim. So, well, sure, but I mean. That if I say that there's A and not A, right? Can something be both A and not A at the same time? 
Yes. Okay. So that's called the identity property of logic. And if you believe that something can be call a parallel universe, just call it whatever you want. You uh, ask me if I believe in, in that, and nah, I do. So now okay. you're going to argue about why I shouldn't believe in it and use logic. But I want to well, go back to original but, sin. Well, again, because... it, but, but Cass, we have, if you believe, if you can believe that A can be A and not A at the same time in the same way, then we have nothing to talk about because you you okay. are not processing logic at all in any way because that's one of the identity properties of logic is that there a cannot be a and not a at the same time and in the same way and if you're saying that it can be then that we literally cannot communicate as human beings it's impossible so, for so us to communicate how do you explain the double split syndrome then if if you can't it, it, what, how do you explain that then? Because physics has shown mm -hmm. that that is the that is possible. I believe it means so, banana. Okay, well then we disagree. So that's it. Okay, it means hairbrush. Don't insult me. I'm not insulting you, but what I'm saying is, if we can believe something is A and not A at the same time, then we have lost all ability to make sense of the world, and we, we literally cannot communicate as human beings. I, I don't think so. I don't think that's the case at all. I, I think it opens our minds in that we're not so myopic in how we view the world, in that we open ourselves up to possibilities of truths, of new truths, of deeper truths, that we go down into, uh, you know, the world is not flat and it's round. Well, okay, so the world is not flat and it's round, but round and flat, how does that compare? Uh, how does that compare to the rest of the universe? How do we fit into the rest of the universe? Right. Can I, can I have a squared circle? I don't know, in the fifth dimension, maybe. Can I have a, a round triangle? You're laughing at me, so... Um, I'm not laughing at you. I'm, it's just the, no, it's, we're it's in what's different called places. The, it's what's I believe called in the absurdity physics. of the contrary. I, I will tell you that I do believe in quantum physics more than anything else. So, you know, your arguments really... Can you tell uh, me the first uh, premise of quantum physics? What is quantum physics based on? Uh, there's there's that, there's laws of quantum that physics. That reality properties. is that uh, reality is you and I see it uh, is not necessarily the case. That we can't always see the reality of things. For instance, you'll call a door a door. I'll look at that and I'll say, yes, that's a door. And somebody will say, no, that's a bunch of molecules that are built in a certain way that create the illusion of a door, and you call it a door. And I can't agree or disagree with that. I only know that that's what I was told, that that's a door. And so when I see anything that opens and closes, I say that's a door. So when you talk about, like, different universes and different God or different planets and all this other stuff, and different, you know, elements of what you believe to be eternal life, and I call that Jesus. Well, what if I'm right, and and it is Jesus? So well, it it could be that it is Jesus. Um, I just don't put it in such small, finite terms. I I look at if I want to know. Uh, what the universe is all about. I have to be open to it. And I'm not going to give it the name Jesus because your idea of Jesus, my idea of Jesus, and somebody else's idea of Jesus, it may be different. Um, uh, but what if Jesus, is, so, so if I'm right for a minute, like what if Jesus is, you know, hanging out in heaven and he's up there saying, yes, it is me. I'm, I'm real. Here I am. I don't, I don't want you to call it something other than me because I, I have a name. This is my name. Call me by my name. I created you. I am the one that created everything. You need to get this right. That's the only thing you need to do in your life is point to the right person. Who is I? 
So, you know, that's like Chris back to the hairbrush. It's like, well, well you know, if you don't you want to call it. You said Jesus is Jesus. So now you're saying Jesus is I. And then somebody says Jesus is Yiwa. So what? if you tell me I have to call him Jesus, then that that's the only name I can call him by? No, no. We're identifying. But with that name, okay, okay, there, hang, hang there are principles and an idea of that name. You know, you, you look at Bob and people say, oh, Bob is a good guy. And then you go to the neighbor and say, Bob is a bad guy. Uh, no, that's completely not what I'm saying. That, like, not in perfect English. So, like, we identify the being, right? We don't identify, like, an abstract concept of, like, you know, different galaxies or universe. Be like, it's all God. It's all Jesus. So, I, I don't mean you have to speak the name of Jesus in perfect English. I mean, you identify that, that being, that entity, right? So, if someone says Jesus in Spanish, Jesus translated, or Yeshua HaMashiach in, uh, you know, in a different tongue, just because they're saying different words, they're they're identifying that specific being, right? So like, uh, you know, God's not going to hold a translation of the of the name against you. But if you're if you're saying Jesus or anything, identifying that being, that's the point, right? We believe eternal life and salvation is through that being. So if you say, okay, well, eternal life is you know different planets, well, well that's very clearly not identifying a being. That's identifying another you know other matter created by this being. That, that was the point. So, like, not not the name, um, whatever language you're in, but identify that guy. That's the one we're talking about. And when I said, who is I, that, that was that was just a language phrase. Not like, who is I, like, I am Jesus. I mean, like, if I, I said, if Jesus is in heaven saying, you know, all these things, and Jesus, who is I, meaning Jesus is speaking. That was just a language, a way of speaking. Hope you got that. I got that. Okay, okay, so real quick, Cass, is there truth outside of ourselves? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. So the only source that we can know for sure is our own senses? No. Okay. Would it, what, what outside of our senses would we be able to trust? Uh, well... It, that that's kind of a uh i'm not a scientist uh i i don't know uh everything about what i experience where it comes from but new information can come to me at any time uh and that can be an experience but it doesn't come from me it it is something i channel from where from out the universe but how do you experience that through your five senses or a different avenue um through your heart and your heart perceives things how i don't know uh i don't know i can't explain love uh, i can't uh, some days it feels like this. Some days it feels like that. Uh, I give it the label love because I, I do the best I can trying to figure out uh, information and experiences and so forth. Um, and uh, something changes. So I try to identify a change. I don't always have an answer to that. Um, but it exists because I've experienced something. So, so let me ask you this. If, God forbid, some kind of accident happened, and, and I don't think this has ever happened in history, but just go with me on the hypothetical, right? And you lose access to all five of your senses. You can't see, hear, feel, taste, or smell, okay? Is there a way you can experience new experiences without your five senses? Absolutely. Okay, what is that avenue? I don't know, but I have a nephew who doesn't have a brain. And I see him laugh. He cannot see. He cannot hear. He cannot swallow. He cannot walk. I see him okay. with his cerebral palsy and how he battles that. Um, I would judge that he would be miserable and in pain, but he is not. 
And he is sweet, kind, loving, experiences his eyes gleam. He experiences something that I don't know what it is, but it is profound. Mm-hmm. I, I guess what I'm trying to get at, though, is that there's have you ever heard the term epistemology? No. Okay. So it's it's just a, a big, fat philosophical word that means the study of how we get knowledge, right? How we how we get things about the world in, into us, okay? And so if we are putting forth a proposition that some that we can have, say, a round triangle, right? And, and the reason I'm saying this is that a triangle is not a real thing in space, right? It's a conceptual object. We know that a triangle has certain properties. Um, and if I say something like we can have a round triangle, I'm directly um, going against the properties that make up a triangle. It may be something different, but by definition of a triangle, it can't possibly be a triangle. Would you agree but to isn't that? A tri- no, because isn't a triangle... Uh, wasn't the properties of a triangle uh, determined from the circle that if you take the 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 arc out of the circle uh, and you do this, you end up with a triangle. So aren't they the same? They're just different ways of looking at it and studying the different properties of it and focusing on the different properties of it can you have a triangle without a circle i don't think so yeah i i mean i i would love to continue this but i i just if we can't agree on the conception of what truth is in terms of how humans experience the world like then we're just be going to be talking past each other do you know what i'm saying like I'm not, I, think, I can't I possibly understand. To, I think we're trying to share, but I, I think <laughs> I, I've heard what you have said and I was raised that way, but I've also opened up to new things. And, and when I speak, you kind of try to bring me back into the ideology that I thought was not broad enough and that I moved into new things and experienced things. And that's where we're miscommunicating. We're not sharing ideas, but I'm not, I'm not trying to argue whether that that there is a Jesus or any of that. Um, And that's what you're trying to do is tell me that I have to view the world from the point of view of Jesus. Yeah. Well, I mean, I hope there's no confusion, but that's exactly what we're doing. So, right. you know, broad isn't always better. Like people, people somehow have this misconception that broad and more is better. Sometimes less is more. But what if my experience has become more profound? What if I have found new things that have incredible value and meaning Great. to me? And, okay. and that has broadened my ability to love and uh, giving me uh, a richer life. And what if all of yeah. that has happened to me? Then are you saying that it's all an illusion and that I'm meddling with the devil? I mean, again, we go back to original sin. Well, well, hang hang on. Before I I don't want to go back to original sin. It's not necessary. What I'm saying is I'm not discounting your experiences. What I'm saying is it's apples and oranges. Like I can agree with you about probably a lot of stuff you would say about uh, you got to You got to mute when you're not speaking. I get a lot of feedback, but I could probably agree with you about a lot of stuff you would say has has helped in your life with your experiences and all this stuff. But then you're like, well, what do you have to offer? And I'm like something on a completely different world. Like we're, we're not even talking about the same things. In a hundred years, all your experiences are not going to matter because you will be dead. I, I'm talking so far beyond this life. And it sounds like kind of you do too sometimes, but then you come back to, you know, this life and your experiences here and now. I'm like, great. Your experiences here and now are temporal. So before we talk about this temporal stuff, we're, we're trying to talk about the ultimate point, which is going to, you know, we believe it's the claim that's going to get you to a happy eternal existence, which is narrow. It's a very, very narrow path. It's not broad is better. It's less is more. So, so that's the whole claim. 
Um, but Kevin's been up here for a while. I wanted to give Kevin a chance to speak to Kevin. Okay, but I disagree with that. I think okay, that's well, myopic. Wait, 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 well, Okay, well, that, that's fine. I, I believe uh, wait, eternal well, life hey, hey, is a lot more than that. And I, like I said before, I believe that this is just a spec. This is not my whole, my whole fundamental soul should not be based on my earthly experience. The earthly experience, why ever, I don't know why it's here and what I'm going to learn from it, but I think it's such a spec. I don't think that earth is important. I yeah, think it is uh, a game of entertainment. I don't think it's that relevant in my soul. It is just a little speck. It's like a moment of laughter. Well, yeah. So something we can totally agree on is something you said a minute ago, which was we disagree. And I agree. Like there's nowhere else to go, right? You think broad is better, more is more. And I take, you know, what you no. call my uh, well, no, hold on. Okay, stop, stop. It. No, 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 stop, 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 stop. We're done. Yeah, I, I, I got to speak. Like, like you said, it was hard for you to speak earlier. It's hard for me to speak when people interrupt me. The point is, we disagree. Like, we just disagree. Like, I've laid out, you know, my case. The other people have laid out their cases to why we believe you should prayerfully reconsider this Jesus. And then you tell us about, you know, whatever you tell us about the broad experiences, you know, these views, everything you said. I don't want to misquote you, but everything you said. And which we vehemently disagree. So at the at, at the expense of not, you know, going round and round and round, which we already are starting to, um, we just disagree. So I mean, you know, at the end of the day, from my perspective, if if you think, you know, my God is too narrow or is is you know too narrow sighted, then like Joshua twenty three says, you know, choose this day who you will serve. Will it be whatever I, you're talking about, or will I don't, it not? So, I don't think we're disagreeing. And, um, you know, I, I don't think we're disagreeing, but I also don't want to you to think you are misquoting me and maybe I'm not articulating things correctly. Well, but let, me, let me try. When I say well, the I, word I, broad, don't focus on the word broad. Um, I, I'm saying that you say it's apples and I say it's oranges. And I think that's the problem because you said it's apples and I think it's oranges. And I'm not saying that. I'm saying maybe there's a grapefruit. Okay. I, I, I hear the grapefruit thing. I, I do want Kevin to speak because, because we have trying to be this, but, but ultimately this is what I'm saying, right? So here is my claim. This is a claim. If, if you disagree with this claim, then, then we just disagree, and you know we, we're just not on the same page. If you agree with this claim, then welcome back to your ancestry and you know your evangelical roots. Here's the ultimate claim I would make. If you said, hey, you got a minute, what do you want to say? I'll do it in like 10 seconds. Jesus claims he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. If someone has faith in Christ alone and will follow him, repent, believe the good news, receive eternal life, that person will be forever saved. Anyone, no matter what they believe, no matter if they believe that plus a bunch of other stuff, that person we believe is not saved. So if you agree with the first part, Jesus is the only way, only Jesus, only God, no other religion, no other God, no other way, no other meditation, just Jesus, then we're on the same page. If you would say one thing different than that, then I would say, you know, it is as I thought, and, and we just disagree too much that uh, we are just not on the same page. And then, you know, we can just civilly disagree. So do you agree with what I said, the first part? I, I, I think you need to go to look at what Jim so, Rigby mm -hmm. has to say about all that, because what you said was a quotation. And the quotation is, I think, could be interpreted so many ways. So for you to ask me, if I agree with a quotation, that quotation is probably 10,000 years of things that need to be studied and understood and new information and looking at a variety of things. I would never simplify it. We're saying this is a quotation. Uh, believe this in a legalese point of view. Uh, that quotation is a fundamental quotation that Who needs to be studied and studied and studied. Who did I quote? You quoted the Bible. You said something about a oh, okay. gym guy. Who is the gym guy? I was about to ask if you knew, but while you're looking up Jim, Rig Jim Rigby, um, 
I, I want to give Kevin a chance to speak. I've been I've been saying that forever. I don't want to be rude, but Kevin, go ahead and uh, speak while Chris Google's Jim Rigby. I looked at it. He's like a pastor in Austin, but I didn't get to read because we Wait, were talking. Wait, like, can you spell it? Like, I'm just I'm trying to look this guy up. Uh, Cass, it's it's J I M R I G B Y, right? Jim Rigby. First name is Jim. Second name is Rigby. Like Eleanor Rigney, Rigby. Beatles, no. Okay, Kevin, what's up, Kevin? Did you want to say something to Cass or anything? Yeah. Else? No, I was just going to say something overall. Um, I mean, it's just kind of like a thought process of just hearing you guys. It's hard to pinpoint what she actually believes. Um, listening for the past 10 to 15 minutes, I didn't catch the beginning. Um, it, it seems to me that she's taken pieces and parts from different worldviews. But either way, I'm happy that she came on um, to hear the Christian uh, perspective and what we actually believe, which is that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins and three days later rose again. Um, it's the worldview that makes the most sense. Um, and, and we could answer the questions more concisely than other religions, other religions and other worldviews. But um, I appreciate you, Cass, and, uh, and Chris and Nate. You guys um, uh, really were able to communicate with her really well. And uh, I hope that uh, uh, that you come to believe what we believe one day. And with that, I'll I'll, uh, I'll mute. Uh, Chris, or did you have a chance to? Uh... Right, hang on, let's give you a fair chance to Google the guy. Todd, what's up, Todd? Yeah, no, Anything I found on it. your mind. Yeah, JimRigby.org. Oh. <laughs> Is it JimRigby.org, Cass? Like I'm reading like uh, scientific spirituality, critical religion theory. Is that correct? Uh, Cass, Cass, I, I you got to unmute, Cass. Cass. It could be. I, I, I don't uh, uh, go to that site. Um, I listen to his sermons um, through his church, so um, it could be. But um, okay. uh, I, I can't remember who just spoke, but um, I grew up with 70 years of what you're talking about. So um, somebody suggested that you hope I come back to believing the way I used to believe for 70 years. Um, and I, I'm just saying that. I, I think that I'm, I'm not trying to be myopic here. I'm, I'm trying to take these things that you consider fundamental to your belief system, and I'm trying to expand them and, and add richness to it and, and to experience it and experience it differently. So to say to come back to something that uh, is shrinking, I, I want to expand it. I don't disagree with any of your philosophies. What I'm saying is that the language makes it so myopic and, and it has less to offer to me because as I've learned to not use a particular word to explain something and that I take other principles and look at that, I'm able, I, I want, again, here, here is an example. If, if we have other planets out there and there is intelligent life out there, um, maybe it's the same Jesus that is involved in all these other planets. I don't know. Couldn't answer that question. Um, have no clue. But if original sin belongs to the earth and there are aliens out there that belong to other planets, do they have original sin? No. No. So original sin belongs to the earth well 
So when we leave the earth, we leave original sin or we came to earth to get original sin. And then we have to scrub it out. And then in order to live forever or go to another planet or whatever, we have to go to earth, get original sin, scrub it out, and then go back out there. Or that's the dead end. We come to earth for whatever reason, we acquire original sin, and that's the demise of our soul. Well, hi, Cass. Um, I just came on, and I'm, it's nice to meet you. But um, I think that what we would say is that original sin is a human condition. Um, the whole world is affected by it. But, like, the squirrel in the backyard doesn't have original sin. Um, other life forms on planet Earth don't have original sin. They're affected by what we have done, and the entire world is in a fallen condition. Uh, but the original sin belongs to humanity because we are the ones that disobeyed God. Um so I'll just kind of land with that. It's not really anything else having original sin, but humanity. Um, so it's an earth thing. No, no, no. It's it's an entire universe thing, if you wanted to put it in that perspective. Everything and all of creation is affected by what we have done. Why? Why? Why then? I mean, here here's the thing is that why would God put Adam and Eve in the garden and say, I'm going to make everything wonderful and perfect. And Adam and Eve are like, yes, everything is wonderful and perfect. And then he says, but there's a bush there. Don't touch that bush because you'll, you'll gain knowledge and you'll experience something out of my wonderful utopian world. And, and so he puts that there and he tempts them deliberately to, to be obedient to him. And they get curious because God gave them mind and God gave them curious. And they came in a little bit enlightened and they said, hmm, you know what? I, I think that I am I'm experiencing curiosity That's and I know I'm not supposed to touch the bush, but I'm going to go touch the bush. So they go and they touch the bush. And then God says, I told you not to touch the bush. And now the rest of my creations of humanity will suffer and everything else. I don't consider that a loving God. Now, that's where religion, I broke away from things because I believe that God gave them curiosity. And it may have been, you know, just like he created things in phases. He may eventually have said, okay, I'm going to create curiosity. I'm going to let you experience this bush. I think he kind of wanted them to experience the bush. And that was part of his plan. And that's what he wanted man to do is go from apple to oranges to grapefruit. That's a very good question. Um, why did God do that? So, and then there was a little bit of a missed point, a little bit of a miss um, in the narrative that you just talked about in the garden there. Uh, Adam and Eve, being the children of God, being his pinnacle creation, we were his loved, amazing, the, the most incredible creation he created. He actually breathed life into us and formed us from the ground where he didn't do that with everything else. He really made us in a very intimate fashion. Now, where we fell and we ate from the tree, it wasn't curiosity that did it. If you remember the story, another, another character came into the garden that told us that if we wanted to we could be our own God. We could be like God. And that was the serpent, also known as Satan, that told us that we could be like God if we would eat from the tree of the garden. And so when we ate of the tree of the garden, we were basically telling God, sorry, God, 
we don't care what you say. We don't care that we are your children, that, that we are your pinnacle creation. We're going to go do our own thing. And we actually just rebelled against our own creator. So it's, it's a little more than a little more deep and heavy than that. It's not curiosity. It's, it's like I know cosmic. I was simplifying it. But I, okay, I got to run fine. you guys. Uh I was simplifying it, Todd. So, um okay. I apologize if I simplified it. I could go on and on and on about it. I could say, well then why did he allow Satan to come to earth? He didn't love us if he allowed Satan to come to earth and then created us. Uh, and he said, "Okay, go to earth and ruin all my people and stuff like that." I mean, I could go on and on and on, but I got to run. Well, thanks but, for being here. Um uh, yeah, come back. As you like. Yeah, come back. Okay. We, we love questions. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Have a good one. Goodbye. Take care. Holy crap. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> oh my gosh. So so just just for the legal notices, Ask a Christian does not encourage nor does Ask a Christian ever want you to try or do drugs in any way. I mean, I'm, I, I, wow. My brain is like a scrambled egg. Yeah, dude, this Jim Rigby guy is awesome. Like, I'm reading, and I don't mean awesome in like, wow, you should listen to everything he says. He's like awesomely wrong about literally everything that he thinks. It's fantastic. I, 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 I. Let's put it this way. There's Hebrew. I, I don't need to have. I don't know if I need to have myself way. checked for like Scientology phenons at this level, because like being in the presence of that, I would be off the charts, or just like jump in a lake naked and bathe myself in holy water. Okay, I'm, I'm so not sure which way to go. So on a scale of one to ten, one being completely stable and you know Eleven. sober, and ten being king of Atlantis, where does ah. this? July. Okay, solid eight, eight point five. Solid eight. <laughs> okay, because because the king of Atlantis is always the ten, right? Like we haven't come <laughs> across anybody quite as insane as the king of Atlantis. This is a solid eight, probably eight point five. I I don't mean to mock, but oh my gosh, look, it's like we can disagree, which most of the time we disagree for like sound arguments. But before you got in here, Chris and everyone else, I think it was just her and I to start. It, it reminded me of a person I know way back that they hated Christianity and the God of Christianity. Not, I mean, she said she didn't, but I mean, you know, you could read between the lines. But they really had a bone to pick with Christianity and the Christian God. But everything they would say was just like biblically. It's like your argument is not with God. Your argument is with crappy Christians. It's like the church did this and church hurt and church hurt to like an epic level. And it's like, you know, people do this and they say they follow God, mega church pastors, blah, blah, blah. Like many people who Christians would say, not because we just say, oh, well, we believe different doctrines. No, it's because you're saying and doing and encouraging other people to do objective things contrary to the Bible. Like this is not uh, I believe this and you believe that, you know, it's like, no, no, if, if you're saying you believe the way I do. But you're not doing the same things I do, which is like, you know, looking at the Bible and doing what it says. So it's like, you know, 99 problems with Christianity, but God ain't one. Um, yeah, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, Ask a Christian does not ever encourage nor condone doing drugs of any kind, kids. So please don't do drugs because I believe Cass is the final is the final boss of hey, I did a whole bunch of drugs and I can't think any longer. Because, I mean, if I can have a round triangle, we have serious problems with the universe. So who was the um, the guy Rigby's quote? You want to start there? The Michael... Michelle, Michael, whatever yeah, guy. Michel Foucault. So Michel Foucault is one of the luminaries of 1970s postmodern writing. Um, and he heralded in postmodernism into the academy with um, a couple of books. Um, and uh, he was a Jean Paul Sartre. So I'm butchering these French names. Um, you know, all of these postmodern authors, their premise was 
that humans can't actually know anything from a text. So their, their direct assault was on the word of God. And you actually have Foucault talking about if Jesus is the word and we can make words meaningless, we can erase Jesus. Wait, that, that was not that guy, was it? That's Foucault, yeah. I thought that was like Jacques something. something. Why are all these people French? Is the Antichrist going to be French? Was... I'm calling it now. <laughs> yes. So, so all these guys were French. So, yeah. Sorry. So they all said something along those lines. So, I mean, you know, Foucault said it and uh, Jacques Dorada said it as well. Jacques Dorada, maybe who you're thinking of. Um, and again, I'm probably butchering these French names. But yeah, I mean, all these guys, their assault was... And, and postmodern literary theory literally teaches that you cannot know the author's intention for any text. If I say, Nate is my friend and he will not eat steak, that literally you cannot, Todd, as the third party listener, cannot discern that Nate will not eat steak from my sentence. It's all just up in the air. I mean, in light of this conversation, that makes perfect sense. The big question is, how is it possible that anyone can buy into that? I mean, because clearly it happens because this whole last hour and a half has, has been an indictment on just reading comprehension and, you know, just just life experience. So if we know it's possible. People buy into it and they believe that because we've just had it quoted to us. But mm -hmm. how how can people get to a place where they actually believe that. And they're like, you know, Nate will not eat steak. Nate is my friend. And they're like, nope, uh, Chris hates Nate, and Nate eats steak. Like, how? what goes wrong in someone's head besides maybe, you know, drug use? Like, it's how? Drug use. Have, you, have, you met our, have you met our resident baptized? I, I would take baptized <laughs> any day over what just happened. Any day. <laughs> but this kid, it's... This kid baptized. Love you, bro. Yeah. No, well, done. hey, baptized. I mailed you a uh, a round uh, triangle in the mail. It'll be there next week. So, I like so, the PTR. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, okay. So, so then, and then, I'm just laughing at. Oh my gosh, Chris. Okay. It's... Okay. You need to take the eight-legged chicken. You need to turn it into a titan. And you need to strap that building Baptize has onto its back so your eight-legged Titan chicken is carrying around like one of those things with, with this city with this burning city on its back. Baptize that would be can you profound. Can you uh, Baptize, this is my new account because my old account got banned. Can you um can you back channel me that photo so that I can uh, make a Photoshop today? <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. That is awesome. I mean, the PTRs are so small, you could probably just screen grab it, and it would still be good good enough quality. But okay, so so we got that guy, the Michel Jacques Viard, French. Like my gosh, just uh, not you know. I don't think I've actually met like any French people in Clubhouse, so uh, you know, if I ever do, apologies. But until then, I mean, they've they've got some stuff against them, right? Just from being French. Um, <laughs> thanks for helping us with the war, there, guys. I appreciate that. Shout out. Um, but now now that we've got the origins of that, so where does this gym guy in your short googling? Um, where does he take this and, and go from there? Like, was it just like a happy, easy quote, like, Hey, nice quote. Um, or is, is he like hook, line and sinker into this guy's like postmodern indoctrination? Oh yeah. He's a hundred percent postmodern. He's like, so these are, he has a blog that has been going sent from April, 2020, pardon me, April, 2022 to January, 2012. So he's been blogging for 10 years and he is a, a radical leftist that um, is part of like the, you know, like the, uh, oh, God is, um, God is a radical leftist, left wing <laughs> Christianity. The you know, Jim Rigby guy? Yeah. And if you're not a radical leftist, well. Goodness. His picture yeah. looks like a, a, the most Southern of Baptist preachers. Like his picture looks like super like you'd expect that, but. I guess his ideology is not. I mean, I, I can't, I can't tell you if it's the same preacher guy from Austin. The, I mean, I'm looking at jimrigby.org. 
is what I have found. And it fits perfectly with what she was saying. So like scientific spirituality, you know, um, nothing exists for itself alone, but only in relation to other forms of life. Charles Darwin. And, uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I, right, that's I, his I quote that he starts that article with. Let's, let's find out. I, I Googled this guy a minute ago. I, I didn't go, hang on. It's just fine. Um, Jim Rigby. Um, I don't know where to go. It said he was like a pastor or something. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got 10 ways American churches should change after Trump. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Uh, n- no. Okay. My bad. Um, what the heck? Did, did, I think she scrambled my brain. When I looked up Jim Rigby and got pastor, um, when I, I re Googled the same thing, uh, what it actually came up was state representative. So, um, Forget that picture. I guess I don't know what he looks like, and I guess I'm crazy and coming down from some sort of contact trip. So disregard everything I said. We'll go with what you said, because that sounds a lot more in sync. I mean, yeah, I mean, clergy rising. You know, I googled the word clergy and found a majority of the news items were about clergy speaking in resistance to injustices of our day when I was first ordained. It was quickly apparent people wanted me to say blessings over the status quo, but not to talk about seeking a fairer world. I could tell that as clergy, we have to choose between being chaplains to the status quo or prophetic voices for a better world. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this guy. He's a he's a PCUSA pastor. Remember we were talking about like what, like the liberal denomination of, um, of Presbyterians are. Yes. So like, they don't believe in, they don't actually believe that Jesus. Oh wait, so he's like a liberal version of you? No, he's like a liberal version of Satan. So wait, wait, wait. so you would say you're Presbyterian. I I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about like your similar doctrines. I'm saying like, like, you know, you would have the conservative Methodists who are probably okay enough. And then you would have yeah. the the other Methodists that are completely off the rails. Like that would be right, right? You would say you're the you're the yeah. correct doctrine, like the, the fundamental Presbyterian. And you would say this guy also has the name Presbyterian, but it may right. as well be banana. Right, exactly. Because like they like they don't even believe that Jesus existed, some of them. Wow. Um, you have atheist Presbyterian pastors. Like atheists, like like straight up like, no, God doesn't exist. And my job is Presbyterian pastor. Like those guys, like they, they actually, so like the, the, so the chaplain at Harvard right now actually is an atheist chaplain and he is an atheist Presbyterian. Yeah. Oh, uh, public service announcement. Uh, this is my new account. So if you don't, uh, if you don't have me followed, on this account, my other account got uh, terms of service after my last interaction with a certain person. Terms of service is such a nice way of saying that. I got banned. Yeah, I mean, right, did, did you like my answer when she asked me the question about, like, you know, these, that, and, you know, this stuff about quantum physics? And I was like, yes, banana. And she just went with it, dude. She was like, okay, cool. You know, like, <laughs> like my nonsense answer was perfectly acceptable. I was, that was my favorite. Until she's like, don't insult me. <laughs> but, I mean, oh, my gosh, like, that's that's it, right? It's like people think, like, more is more, and they're like, you know, okay, Jesus, it's so, it's so myopic. Like, I just kept hearing... um Inigo Montoyo, right? Like, you keep using that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. It's like myopic, and my day was myopic, and the time is myopic. I'm like, ah! But it, it's like she has such a, a, I don't know what to say. Like, we need to invent new words to come up with, with ways to describe this. Because it's just like, you know, I'm not disagreeing. I'm like, but you are. So I'm like, look, is Jesus it? And she's like, no, I totally agree. I just don't call it Jesus. It could be the universe, and it could be planets, and, you know, it could be us. I'm like, so you can say you're not disagreeing, but I'm hearing that as disagree all day long. 
Like, th there's nowhere else to go. Like, I'm, I'm hitting a wall here. Like, let me out of this conversation. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, yeah, I'd, I'd give it a solid eight on the, uh, King of Atlantis meter. Dang, man, I really want that guy back. I, I should have gotten his digits. I, I feel bad I didn't get his digits. Uh, anyone else have anything to say? Todd's, Todd's thing on the back channel. He wakes up and hears, Jesus may be the king of other planets. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, aliens. And uh... I was like, uh, I don't know if I'm clubhousing today. <laughs> Do you even that. clubhouse? Uh, you even clubhouse, bro? <laughs> oh, no. So, Todd. If there were really space aliens out there, would they have original sin? <laughs> that, that was Todd's good. like, no. <laughs> like, how do you answer that question? So, Chris, um, what would you say? Where would you go between you know? Because um, I know this is gonna gonna happen. Um, between you know people who um, are trying to you know be good little Christian people. And then where, where does it turn from, oh, my gosh, like, I have to have an outlet because that was insane, and I have to, like, get this angst out versus, uh, you know, turning into a vicious mockery of the, um, you know, um, um, I, I can't even see, I can't even say anything without saying something negative, um, without turning into some sort of mockery that would be uh, bad. <laughs> I mean, the thing about it is, like, I'm not mocking the lady, like, I... I just, we can't have a conversation. Like if you, if you're telling me that you can have such a thing as a squared circle or a round triangle, like we're not on the same planet. Like we're not, the sky is purple in your world and it's blue in mine. And you know, the entire world is made of shrimp, like just all made of shrimp. And her planet I, has Jesus as king. Oh. Yeah. I mean, we just, we're not, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't have human communication. And, and oh, perfect example. This is the point of postmodernism. The point of postmodernism is to shut down human communication. And one of the reasons that we have, like, the, the echo chambers that we have today is that because we have attacked terms at their root, and I am not going to get into the discussion from yesterday, but because we have attacked terms at their root, when I say banana and I mean like something like it is cylindrical in nature that tapers at both ends and is generally yellow or green and develops brown spots over time. And I say banana and that's what I mean by it. And Nate hears me say banana and he thinks of, I don't know, a grapefruit which was the example earlier. Um, now we are not communicating because he's thinking that, you know, banana means a round thing that is pink or yellow in nature that when you cut it open, um, you know, has little uh, seeds in it and, you know, is, is got a sour taste. Whereas when I mean banana, I'm talking about a completely different subject. That's what postmodernism's aim is. It's to shut down all human communication. Yeah, I mean, it does a fairly good job. I, I, was, I was ready to bail on my own room. I mean, did you hear her when she said, there, you know, you, when, when you see an apple, maybe I see an orange. But what's really going on is that it's a grapefruit. And I was like, <laughs> I just, <laughs> I, I mean, how, what do you even say to that? Like, how do you even respond to that? I don't know. Let's see if anyone else wants to respond. Anyone just, just come on up. I have like 20 minutes left. So I'm just sending everyone an invite. If you want to come up and talk about anything, um, nothing can be worse than the conversation we just had. Um, invites all around. If you want it, take it. If you don't, ignore it. We promise we won't call you grapefruit. Bevy Costal, welcome back. 
Hey, what's up? Thoughts? On what? I just got in. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear any of that? No, I just popped in and you said Bepta Custer. Never mind. Take it away, Chris. So, so Felix, if I have an apple sitting on a table, can you describe an apple to me? Can I describe an apple? Yeah, tell me what an apple looks like. Well, they come in different varieties of colors. Um, the shape is like, uh, some people draw it in a heart shape, uh, but there's different shapes. But mostly, you know, when you think of an apple, you think of a red apple. Most of the time we think of a red apple, at least I do. Even though they have green apples, you have red and yellow and green apples, you know, different colored apples. Uh, but then most, most of them look the same for the most part. Now, if I were to tell you that that's really a grapefruit, are we talking about the same thing? No. I think when, <laughs> I, when I hear grapefruit, when I hear grapefruit, I think of something different. <laughs> yeah. That's just the discussion we were having. So, like, there was this lady who's a hardcore postmodernist that was just like, no, they're, all words are meaningless, essentially. I think I, I, think I was argument. here when, when she was started to speak. Is that the same lady that was saying that she don't need the Bible, that the Bible's not necessary? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I heard her speak at the beginning, and I'm like, uh, I hate it. I, that's why I left. <laughs> I mean, I don't think she thinks oxygen is necessary. You know, like... Oxygen is just, you know, it, it's it's something that's optional, that's nice to have, but not a have to have. Empty, what's up, Empty? Empty void. I, I feel like I've been floating around there for the last hour. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to apologize for the noise straight away. You can hear all that in the background. Woo! Yeah, so maybe I can help suss this out a little bit. Maybe what she meant is that Apple is something that is agreed upon by all human beings. But in reality, it has no name. Yeah, that I wish language, that, I language, wish language, that's language, going. language is an agreement among human beings that it's our best description of reality. Is that something that maybe we could agree on? <laughs> no, she was questioning the very nature. Of right, but I mean, maybe it would. This would be my best assessment of maybe what she was pointing at. I mean, that's the only way I could suss it out. Because otherwise, yeah. otherwise, then she's saying that that uh, communication is invalid on all points. So, what's even the point of her? Right, and that's pretty much what she was saying. When I said, when I asked her, like, "Can I have a round triangle?" She answered, "Yes." Right. Well, she's just not obeying the rules of language. So, I don't think she knows that though, and there's no way to explain that to her. So, she is. This person is beyond our reach. Oh man, empty! You got you got to mute empty. That that noise is killing my ears. <laughs> so Patrick, oh Todd, go ahead, Todd. So the whole thing about this language not being relevant or not being um, needed and necessary, I believe, is a satanic. Um, this is a this is an effort by Satan to keep people from coming to the gospel because when we say you're a sinner. You're going to go to hell unless you believe in Jesus Christ, who died for your sins and rose from the dead, and He's going to give you eternal life if you believe on Him. You say that to this, to this lady or somebody, they hear, Yeah, I want to take a trip to Neptune too. I mean, it's like, <laughs> it's like, don't, don't have communication, humans, or I might lose another soul to God, so you guys could just talk about whatever you want, and nothing means a thing. Yeah, it's, it's going down. It's this way. Uh, Patrick. 
Hey. Last uh, days. Tr- <laughs> yeah. What's up? <laughs> no, I'm just uh, Todd hit, is hitting the nail on the head, and because isn't that exactly what the serpent did in the garden? Wants to confuse what God said. First, he asks what God said, and then he changes it up. And if things, I mean, if if language is something we agree upon, we've all agreed on it. And then somebody's like, I disagree with that. Let's change it to this. And we're not agreeing upon it. Then it stays that. It, 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 words have to mean something. It, everything can't just be arbitrary. It, it's got, it, it, that's chaos. And that's what happened in the garden. You know, things were, you know, language was changed. And then disobedience. Yeah. So I just, I, it's weird. Yeah, and I, I'm, I'm with you. And, you know, she's like, the, the prelude to all this was she said she was like, uh, you know, the fourth generation of like, you know, missionaries, evangelicals, and all this stuff. Yet, every, it's like, did you not go to one single Sunday school class? Like, I know we, we typically, you know, have a heavy hand against, you know, indoctrinating religious parents who are overbearing. But my gosh, if there was like a prayer closet, they could have thrown her in once or twice. Um, you know, she could have at least had a proper understanding, but everything she was saying was just, just, just wrong. Not because I believe it's wrong. I mean, she couldn't even quote like a thing from the text that she apparently has like 70 years of experience and indoctrination in. It was just like objectively wrong. I'm like, look, you don't have to believe it. Just say something that would resemble the words on the page. So, I mean, you know, maybe if there was a sin closet here and there that she could have got stuffed under some share, chairs. Uh, by the way, official position, ask a Christian, don't do that. But, you know, if, if 70 years ago, um, it maybe would have a different result. Um, Victoria, what's up, Victoria? Hello. Hello. Sorry, was I interrupting? No, no, I just saw you on stage and you were next in line, so I wanted to see if you had anything to say. Have you ever experienced a, a sin closet under the stairs? What? Sorry, I missed that. A sin, a sin close, close, closet I'm, under stairs like in Harry Potter? Oh, oh! did they shove him under a closet for like punishment or timeout or something? It wasn't that his place to live or something? Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, okay. Well, maybe. No, I, I was being kind of flippant because, uh, you know, a lot of people say how, like, complain about how they were indoctrinated by their evil parents, um, you know, about their God or their religion when really the parents just like took him to church. So, you know, I was painting a picture like, you know, they were like, uh, you know, the punishing them and throwing them in like a secluded thing, like making them be indoctrinated. Anyways, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, do you have anything uh, to say, not barring sin closets? Uh, well, uh, I, I am really surprised at that. Let me take a minute to digest that, but well, I'll let the other stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off with the sin closet. Um, <laughs> Mycroft, welcome. You, uh. You missed a thing. I guess I did. Um, you can be your own God, but you're not God, but you're all gods, and you may be more than one person. And um, Jesus is king of all planets and aliens. Is that Mormonism? But he, al- but he also may not exist. Is that Mormonism? No. It's it's something like you would say that is more – what we just experienced is Mormonism the way we would say that black Hebrew Israelites are Christians. Wow. Okay. It's another level, huh? There is what we were talking. Um, man, you've got some catching up to do. Um, there is one guy um, that takes the cake. He was, he was called King of Atlantis. We legitimately believe that he legitimately believes Atlantis is real. He knows the location. It's it's in the North Pole, by the way, and he is the king of it. And occasionally he comes here to recruit followers to like you know take back and give mermaid fins or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but this this is the way. Um, the conversation we just had almost comes to that level. Wow. So welcome. Hey, well, I'm glad that you had it without me because I'm not sure that I couldn't have been flippant, but um, yeah, there you go. You know, the, sa- the the weird thing was I had tuna salad for breakfast this morning. You know, did your tuna like, salad include word salad? <laughs> sort of. Sort of. I thought of Kamala Harris at the time, but um, um, yeah, no tuna salad. I mean, you know, mermaids, dolphins, whatever. You know. Anyway, um, good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Hey, hey, so Nitro. Or Mycroft. Yeah. Can you? Can you? Can you 
Can you have a round triangle? No. Well, that's just very narrow of you. Well, <laughs> I, I am narrow. I am narrow of a lot compared to a lot of people these days, I think. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, I'm, I'm okay with words having very prescriptive meaning as found as the found in the dictionary. Right. You know, I, I love Racist. when, when most people like in today's generation will tell me that fascism is a right or conservative construct. It most assuredly is not, at least not according to the dictionary, but whatever you know so yeah and that was another thing right like she she really talked about again it's like she'll pick one example and pronounce judgment on all christianity while also saying how free and open and non-judgmental she is um but she's like i i don't like churches that mix politics with religion but the guy she brought up as her like you know lord and savior mentor does that with the you know the whole like postmodern stuff and getting into like Marxism and all this other stuff, so it, it's it's I mean I guess it is that that side of the political spectrum how you know you would say one thing and do the other or accuse the your opposition of doing the very thing you are. Um, so you know personally, I don't like a whole lot of politics in my religion, uh, but there's time that the two overlap. So like you know for example when the world in which we live tries to use political ideologies and indoctrinate our children in schools. And, you know, part of what they're indoctrinating them with uh, conflicts with the word of God. And it's like, hey, I would prefer not to have politics with religion, but there is a time and a place. So if you're going to do that, well, we're not just going to like sit silently and let you, you know, spew whatever you want. We're going to counter with what we think. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, there was a public school teacher, I think it was like a junior high teacher in Indiana somewhere who took down the flag that we usually say the Pledge of Allegiance to and put up her LGBT flag and then put some sort of like diatribe video up on YouTube about how she was so happy that the administration was so clueless that they would never walk into her room and see her flag. Yeah. That's the uh, world Chris, we live in. Are, Chris, are you working on your uh, Titan chicken? Didn't hear you, Chris. I just said not yet. I'm just uh, oh. trying to get these computers still, ready still before I have to drop them off. <laughs> but yes, I will work Careful on my look. Titan, my ty Titan chicken here soon. Baptize. That's a great be, picture, man. Be, be careful, your computers don't transport you into the fifth dimension. Um, Baptize. I will call on you, but I I don't recognize Apostle, so I wanted to see what they have to say real quick, and then we'll get to you, Baptized. Apostle, what's up? What, oh wait. Um, is, is the, is the, oh, Sean. Um, oh, I know Apostle Sean. I didn't see the first name. Oh, Chris. Sean. Is the, is Sean. the, uh, Sean, not is Sean. The round, Sean. Sean. Is the, uh, is the rounds, the, uh, round square, is that what's in the fifth dimension? I think of I don't the fifth know. dimension, I think of the, the singing group. Fifth harmony? No. The fifth dimension is a it's this an old art, it's an old soul the group from the Oh, was that their name? That was fifth dimension. Yeah, you I know, know um, a group. Let and the I'm sun shine in. I know fifth harmony. Let the sun, <laughs> let the sun shine. Because the leaves yeah, I, know the song. I had no idea that was their name. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sean, yeah, what's up? What's going on? <laughs> oh, I've been in a powerful uh, conference slash drive to get students into the um, university where, I, where I'm becoming an adjunct professor at starting this January. I remember you saying something about that. Yeah, uh, yeah I, so that's what I've been doing. I'm going to be catching a plane out this evening from uh, Tennessee back to Ohio. So I've been down here and I've enjoyed myself immensely. It's been a great success. We've got... We got 30 students to uh, enroll in the Empowered School of Discipleship Master Class, which teach people, which we use the conception to the conception and identity concept, three, like three uh, trimesters that a baby is in the womb and then 
Uh, and the fourth is a, an internship slash one-on-one with, uh, with one of the professors, uh, with, the, with, the, with who's also the chancellor of the school. And uh, so it's been a marvelous success. I'm going to be doing teaching church history and spiritual formation. So, uh, all right, good luck. Let us know how it goes. Well, um, I'll let you know. I let you so, know start in January. <laughs> are you teaching right. grad school, Sean? Or are you teaching? Um, I'm, Sean, doing, uh, I'm doing. I'm doing undergrad. Uh, undergrad. Doing undergrad church history one. So just read two, and uh, what textbook are you using? Uh, one of the books that we're going to be using is Fox's Book of Martyrs. The other one is called The Eternal Church by Dr. Bill Heyman. Uh, also going to be, uh, we're trying to go over on the textbook to use for spiritual formation. Does anyone have any good suggestions? I mean, for spiritual formation, I would say, I mean, I'm not sure what they mean by that term, but like, if you did like Living by the Book by Howard okay. Hendricks, okay. that would be a real good one to give people an excellent foundation on how to read and interpret the scriptures for themselves. Spiritual, spiritual formation, how does one rank, rank in the spirit? Uh, you know, uh, uh, Joel chapter 2, where it says in that in the army of the Lord, no one breaks ranks. Using a military, because uh, I'm a military veteran, using a military idea with from a biblical uh, perspective. You know, I don't mind that, but if you have, uh, you know, the wrong kind of student, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're going to catch all kinds of heat for like, you know, military indoctrination, turning into the actual army of the Lord, um, you know, prepare for some, articles, prepare <laughs> oh, for some uh, sure. articles to be written. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. We're going to make sure they understand that, no, this is not talking about using uh, physical weapons. Oh, no. <laughs> you, you can't the use physical weapons. The sword of the spirit. The That's weapon. all. The sword of the spirit. <laughs> uh, well, uh, okay, yeah, I, so know, uh -huh. I realize that Jesus said, uh, uh, don't carry just just the sword, carry two. But <laughs> I believe, I believe, I know that's, that's for military purposes, but, uh, and also protection of your home, but not, not, uh, not, uh, on an everyday thing. You're going to come out here. And we're going to be the wild, wild west. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, baptize, um, you, I think heard some of that conversation previously. Um, would you say that if she said, uh, having, you know, believing all the stuff she talked about, if she said, yes, I have cried tears of living water and repentance. Um, and then all the other stuff she said, would you say she is saved or, um, you know, even though she cried physical tears, uh, no, that uh, she, the other stuff she said would would discount that, and those were just like regular tears, not living water tears. Or would you say, nah, she's good? Oh, don't leave me hanging after that setup. Come on, baptized, are you there? You let me down, baptized. All right. Well, um. Yeah, Mycroft. Yeah, give us a couple final thoughts, and then I'm going to have to run for the day. I think uh, for sure she must be saved because she cried tears of living water, right? Either either those tears were living water or they weren't, so she must be saved. Sarcasm, I mean. There you go. Chris, how about you? No, knowing baptize as well as as well as the, uh, you know, you do. Yeah, in his paradigm, 100%. Yeah. Is, is baptized once saved, always saved? I don't... I don't oh, know. probably not. I would imagine, no. Uh, well... His house is on fire, though. <laughs> Said, put your house in order, not on fire. Uh, Todd, any words of why the wisdom... Ah, I can't even talk. I, I need to decompress. Any words from the wise, Todd? Nope. Uh, baptized is not once they're globally saved, though. He hates Calvinism. 
Well, I'm not a fan of Calvinism, but I wouldn't say, you know, that automatically means you can't, you know, that would affect your decision on once saved, always saved. I mean, you could be like a, you know, three and a half point Arminian, just like, you know, people are four point Calvinists. All right, Steph, here's your chance to say something for 30 seconds before we uh, shut it down in case you want to. I got absolutely nothing for you guys this morning. I have been just so entertained by listening to this. There's there's nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> I am sorry for all of you who had to endure that. And I wasn't watching, but was it Todd who was actually trying to engage with her gently? Yep. I think we all, even Chris, Chris, to your credit, even Chris, um, you know, we all tried to engage with her gently. Um, I mean, I think I did okay. I got a little snarky towards the end because it was just insane. But um, I, I think I hid my snark well. Maybe did. Maybe I didn't. But, uh, you know, even the thing, she's like, it's like Mormonism and my Mormon friends. And, you know, we're all good. And Chris is like, you can tell he's like frothing at the mouth. He's like, uh, Nate, <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm like, so I, I gave some other people a chance to, you know, jump in. And then I'm like, all right, Chris, go for it. Like, you know, she's she's not... Man, it's like you want to you want to be nice and you know handle them kid gloves, like because you know you don't want to want to just intentionally like bother someone, especially like you know it sounds like an elderly woman. Um, but then she started getting a little more cranky and a little more aggressive, and it's like, all right, we tried. Chris, let her have it. Don't don't do drugs, kids. The official position of Ask a Christian is don't do drugs. Wait, so what was her position? Um, in all this just everything uh, uh i don't know i've tried before like you know she's all into quantum mechanics has no idea what it is all into <laughs> fifth dimensions doesn't even comprehend the 3d world she's in now um mormonism is cool christians are bad christians aren't bad because of anything to do with jesus christians are bad because of you know uh christians being mean to her um and you know the bible was rewritten a thousand times we didn't even touch on that because just why bother um, and just all over the place, man, all over the place. Did you get a name? Yeah. So I, Jim I, Rig, Jim Rigby was her guiding star. Well, what was her name? I mean, I want to say oh, it would be like Legion because there are many. But, oh, um, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legion. That, that's yeah, terrible. Yeah. So, so the, the official name for her belief system, Mycroft is hairbrush. Mm -hmm. Hairbrush. Oh wait, no, it's champagne bottle. Oh wait, no, no, no! It's a, uh, it's scanner. <laughs> wait, no, it's just stick. looking around the room. Why you got champagne at your office, Mycroft? To answer <laughs> your question, I think That's her a very good actual question, name Steph. was like <laughs> Kaz or Cass or something like that. Okay. In case you're, in case you're gonna go, uh, you know, engage in a conversation with them, keep an eye out for that one. Well, there's a lot of a lot of women that are in the '60s that created their sort of new age hodge, hodgepodge, you know. It's like a really bad, badly cooked shepherd's pie of, of crap, you know, but that's just how it is. Isn't, aren't shepherd's pie all made of cow chips? Theoretically, <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, Minecraft, I know, I know. Okay, this, uh, shepherd's pie is awesome. I mean, I can't really eat it now, but um, anyways, uh, Minecraft, the, um, um, her belief system is, is far beyond what I'm about to say. But it's most closely related to that uh, lyrical Orion person from Google. Oh my God! Okay, it's it's like at least double that. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> that's it, really bad. Nate, if you can do this, or maybe Steph can do, can you please find the replay with the King of Atlantis? There were two in I, here I with can't. the King of Atlantis. I, I think some people have. You've looked. tried. It was it's so long ago. There have been like two hundred or more. Uh, yeah room since then crap that, man and that was before i was recording so man that would have been absolute gold i just <laughs> oh we gotta find it we gotta i can anybody do a fact finding mission today and find the king of atlantis replay i think it was sometime in january of this year jesus it was like january and and my favorite was when we got matt slick to engage with the king of atlantis and matt slick was like 
he was just completely befuddled. He was like, I got nothing. I'm just going to let him talk. Uh, well, it's King hilarious when he... Well, of well, Atlantis? Yeah, the king... Wait, wait, was that his actual name, the king of Atlantis? Or did he... Yeah. Uh, like, like the name we saw was king of Atlantis? Yeah, that was or his, like, king? screen or, name. But he... Ha- yeah, his picture was, like... I think it was, like, a blue background and, like, kind of long, longish curly hair, maybe shoulder-length hair. And he had some kind of, like, medallion. I don't know how I'm digging deep for that PTR in my mind, but <laughs> there was some kind of medallion. But it... Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, oh, yeah. It's hilarious, Chris, when, when Matt comes in sometimes. <laughs> right? Because he's used to, like, sort of normal people. So when he comes in, he may listen to, like, a minute, and it sounds like he thinks he knows where the conversation's going. So he's ready with, you know, his, his like, he, he's ready with his, like, normal person reply. And then he'll start and be like, guys, wait, what's, what's going on? <laughs> and we're like, okay, here's what's going on. I'm like... Tell him what you just told us. And they'll drop the most insane line. And he's just like, oh, wow. Um, oh, wow. <laughs> it's just funny. I can, like, picture him, like, you know, taking a big breath. He's like, I, I did not think this was going where it's going. And uh, he'll regroup and continue. But, um, you know, it's like <laughs> he, he, like much of us, puts way too much faith in humanity. But he's learning. <laughs> My favorite part with Matt Slick was the only straw he could grasp on with the guy was Flat Earth, and Matt actually has arguments against Flat Earth. And so he gauged with him on Flat Earth for a minute, and I'm like, I'm like, Matt, I don't think you understand. Flat Earth is the most cogent thing that he believes. And he's like, wait, what? And I'm like, no, that, that's literally the least insane thing that he believes. Wow. That's all I can say to that is wow. See, now we have to get uh, Matt Slick to these rooms that Steph talks about uh, with the flat earthers. So I go into these rooms, and then Christians from this side of Clubhouse follow me in there, and then I get a flood of back channels like, are you a flat earther? And I have to defend every single time. that I need to make a burner so that I can go into my flat earth room. <laughs> People get worried, man. I mean, you know, I would say you're still saved if you if you believe in flat Earth. Oh, you yeah. could be totally wrong, but like, you know, I don't think it's a salvation issue, Seth. If you want to rock the flat Earth, you should you should do that. Okay, hang on. I I uh, I have a PTR for this. Oh, you're not gonna be able to. Oh, you're not gonna be able to see it in here because it's it's too long and it won't um it won't share. But um, this is why everyone should join the Discord. Yes. Did you see it, Steph? I put it on Discord. Did you see well, it? Let me look. Hold on. Okay, so this is a picture. Don't want to run it for Steph who's going to see it on Discord and all its glory. By the way, yeah, if you're not on the Asking Christian Discord, um, we've we've huddled over there. <laughs> Wait, Discord is it the Death black. Star one? <laughs> yeah, so this is this is this making morning. a case for why the Death Star is is actually flat Earth. Um, where is the curve on the Death Star? When you see Luke flying in the channel, there is no curve. Therefore, the Death Star. Is I flat. am your father. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Let me get that real quick. Real, real uh, quick. Anybody see the 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 Joe Rogan podcast where he and his uh, jujitsu teacher Eddie Bravo argue about flat Earth? No. It's hilarious. Okay, so uh, here you go, everyone. I am gonna have to run, but um, yes, if you would like to join us for you know fun Christian ish memes and more. Um, that's about all it is over there, but it's awesome. It's all we need, right, Steph? Uh, yeah. Right, Nate, you're awesome. No, yeah, Nate's awesome. The Discord is fun. Everybody, come join the Discord. Uh, I have my own conspiracy theory channel, which uh, I could use some more input on because I'm always looking for a good conspiracy theory to enjoy. <laughs> all right, so yeah, click that re- link and uh, join us there. I set that. I, I the only reason I set that up was you know in preparation for getting like, you know, double extra super band, ultra band, because, uh, you know, like Chris, people cried um, over one of my rooms that I had nothing to do with. Um, but other people um, said things that gave them bad feels and they reported me. So we got uh, taken down. So I immediately put this channel back up, but I thought, Hey, let's prepare, hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Right. So in preparation for this happening again, I, I just created the discord channel. So uh, 
if we're ever all of a sudden gone one day, um, it's probably more likely that it's because of that and you could find us there um, than, you know, we've converted or, I don't know, maybe the rapture. So, uh, you know, check yourself. <laughs> maybe the rapture. <laughs> yeah. Hey, so just a PSA. This is my new account. My old account got banned. So just uh, follow this new account. Hey, when I came in to the room, um, I, I noticed people were talking about end times or something like that. Was that related to the weirdness of earlier? Oh, uh, no. The only end time discussion was someone said uh, we're living in the end times. Uh, <laughs> that, that's it. There was no uh, no big eschatology. Okay. All right. I hope we're not in the end times, but. Oh, based but... on this conversation, we are definitely in the end times. It is like, <laughs> like look, open your window and look toward the east. This could happen today. Yeah. Oh, boy. The that's world not, is not getting more sane. That's not good. Not good. Not good. It's definitely not good. All right, everyone. Thanks for being here. Man, Mycroft, you got to set your alarm to get up here a little bit earlier. And uh, Steph, you know, pregnancy is no excuse. Wait. Which, oh, wow. Well, yeah, really? Time do you guys okay, start? Tell me more. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I don't. Do you know I, how much uh, you sleep know. I'm getting these days, Nate? Do you want to hear about it? Because uh, my husband's yeah. done hearing about it, so I can complain to all you guys here, people. You got 30 seconds, y'all. I am going to the bathroom every 15 minutes. Do you know what it's like to try to sleep all night when you have to go to the bathroom every 15 minutes? I don't even remember all the bathroom trips because I'm basically sleepwalking to the bathroom every 15 minutes. So I mean, I'm 40, so kind of. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm 48. <laughs> That's, that's David Gore for us. Okay, fine. You're... Well, you guys do that and all. You thought you had us. Carry a yeah. watermelon with you as well. A, a good 35-pound uh, watermelon with you to the bathroom, and then you'll have maybe an idea. Well, as I look down at my gut, I can promise you it's about a 35-pound watermelon. <laughs> you cannot beat us. You cannot win, Steph. Okay, now no. make it move, and then imagine that in a couple of weeks you have to get it out. So, you know, there's all. Well, just I'll just eat a can of pork and beans. It's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness you know all right yeah women think men that all their problems harder. are unique to women but they're clearly yes. not so sad poor men all the women in here let's let's support the men and how hard they have it mm -hmm. absolutely hey, our pain is real pain is real the man cold is a thing you have no yes. idea absolutely Victoria's it's probably reaction. easier to handle aids than the man cold okay i don't know about that but um yeah it's pretty bad anyway <laughs> I mean, it is pretty rough. I, oh, gosh, I hate it. I'm, I'm such a baby. Like, I, I think women just don't have the same experience. Like, they, I, I don't know. Like, if we both get the flu, I, I, I just am willing to think somehow women are like, you know, it's just a little runny nose. I don't feel bad. But then when men get it, it's like our very bones are, like, shattering beneath our skin. Like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. It's yeah. It's got to be real hard that you have exactly the same <laughs> symptoms and you're crying on the couch and we're still doing dishes and taking care of children. There are only three women in this room, but I promise, I promise that none of us are buying this. Well, prayerfully reconsider. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a whole exactly. new, there, there's going to be a whole new denomination that comes out of this right here. Um, <laughs> all right, everyone. Thanks for being here. This was a, I, it was a thing. It was, it was, can we say entertaining? <laughs> is there a better, is there a better, better adjective? And all Peace. of you men go repent and thank your wives and sisters and mothers. <laughs> All right, everyone. Have an awesome day. Take care. We'll see you, I don't know, maybe next week. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.